Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all Hello. of you and paraprofessionals, welcome to this week's episode of Total Health Live, episode number 69, because we hope you're feeling fine for this episode 69. I'm Next Dr. week, 70. Wow. Uh, I, I'm sorry, did I interrupt that's okay. you? <laughs> I was just so excited. I couldn't contain myself. You can't contain yourself. Well, contain yourself for just a brief moment here. My name is Dr. Go for it. My name is Dr. Christopher Vogelman of drvogelman.com, stage, screen, and uh, social media. You'll find me at Dr. Vogelman almost all over total social media. And with me, as always, is the lovely, the talented, the noted nutritionist, nutritionist to the stars, Monica Klein. Can I talk now? Uh, yeah, that would be uh, refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back for another um, informative and hope some, hopefully somewhat entertaining hour or 40 minutes, depending. So Or, or, or 13 minutes, depending on how things go. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thanks for being here. You know what I'm missing? I'm missing our little outline here. But I, I, I will show you something, though. I thought this was pretty interesting. Let me see if I can get this up here on the screen. Because I, I put together today's um, thumbnail for our um, thumbnail program here. And it was based on this, which is Delta, the B1617.2 variant. And I found it interesting that one of the things that they had talked about, let me see if I can find it on here. Um, yeah, is that Delta Airlines had actually not referred to it as the Delta variant. They just call it the other variant. Yeah, well, that, I wonder if they I could uh, sue. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're actually going to do that, but that's a whole other No, I, I don't <laughs> think in this kind of environment that would be uh, a good thing for PR. <laughs> not good for PR. Not good for Puerto Rico or anywhere else. Oh, in fact, you know, I, I just realized we didn't actually share that thing. Let's show you here. Yeah, I was so looking for is, it. Yeah, you're looking for it. There it is. See? There it is. Yes. I have to put my little Canva skills to work to give you that today. So... <laughs> But masking up is very important because Delta is extremely contagious, easily transmissible, and is the most popular variant both in the UK and the United States. Yes, popular indeed, indeed, yeah. in certain pockets of the country. And apparently California is one of those pockets uh, at this time. Um, you know, it's interesting. So this is the breakthrough infection that is being discussed. But this immune escape is quite an interesting concept and it's a little sciencey. So I'm probably not going to go into it too much because um, essentially what, um, what the alpha and possibly beta beta variants, um, what has, what has happened? Well, oh, beta, way, beta, beta was South Africa. Alpha yeah, was beta was South Africa and alpha was Kent UK. And um, did you know that there is a variant, var one or two variants are, are created uh, like every month, and which is less than a lot of influenza, by the way. Um, so that is just the nature of a virus. That's how viruses work. But um, yeah, they were saying the alpha, which was the UK, UK variant and the beta, the South African variant had something called the eek mutation. Yeah, it's for one one amino. It was one amino acid exactly. uh, ch changing to another. Yeah. Yes, so E four eight four K mutation, and apparently the Delta um, variant is is. Um, so what happens with this this eek mutation is um, it's called immune escape, meaning that. Um, that you will possibly be immune to, uh, or the, vac the, the um, vaccine will not be beneficial because the immune system does not either recognize it or it doesn't, it's ine ineffective, <coughs> excuse me. But Delta, there's less of this immune escape in it. So some, you know, we're, we're always looking for silver linings somewhere in the mix because there has this, to be- Is this your bit of serendipity from Joseph Campbell? Hmm. 
I'm channeling jo Joseph Campbell all the time, but this uh -huh. is not Joseph Campbell. This is okay. this is Dr. John Campbell. <laughs> oh, John Campbell. Yeah, Joseph John Campbell's Campbell. more, is is our our favorite myth person. Yes, yes, uh, but not so mythic because so re so relevant and so applicable and not uh, not a myth. Uh, Joseph Campbell, anyway, uh, I, you know, that's a segue. Anyway, that's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so we don't really know um, how this is going to play out with the Delta uh, variant at this point, but um, interesting stuff. And of course, they're seeing younger people being affected, an average age of 18 being affected with the Delta variant. And, and you know, um, so that's, a lesser, uh, 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 a younger age group is being affected uh, at this point with this this mutation, this uh, variant. Well, what you do have to consider too is that Delta actually has a much higher viral load, and so it's easy to shed that virus, even and actually to transmit it, even among those who've been vaccinated, they yeah. can easily spread it. And you're looking at, I don't know, it depends if it's like 25% or 30% or even more. There's a lot of research that's done both in Israel as well as Israel, in the UK yes. and other places. The Israelis probably they think it's higher, like you know, into yeah. the, well into yeah. the 30s and 40s. So yeah, yeah. So so yeah, there is the, there is that um, discrepancy in the Israeli numbers for sure. Um, so also something interesting that I came upon is something called ping demic. Have you heard of that? Yeah, ping demic. I have heard of ping demic. Ping demic. So basically, um, ping me, baby. People are being ping it's causing. A, a massive shortage in all sorts of supply chain, whether it's labor or actual supplies. It's just, yeah, it's disruption of, of the entire distribution system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if a person is, um, you know, found to, you know, have symptoms or is infected, they're being quarantined. Uh, and so that's causing this, this disruption and lack of, of workers. Um, but they're, they're, they're wanting now to just have them do a test and not quarantine anymore to, uh, you know, curb this p potential, this disastrous potential of um, supply chain issues. Yeah. So it's essentially an exemption for food workers as well as for those who are involved in delivery services. Yeah. So it's, it's um, food delivery. They're looking at health, the health field, military, and anyone in the supply chain. Um, so, so that's that's what's happening. So, well, I hope um, it doesn't head this way again. Get out your, get out your uh, shopping carts and get the toilet paper. I'm just sort of like winding down my huge toilet paper supply. But um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. We don't know, but it's there's. I'm, a try, I'm trying to find a mask that matches. So I think this one is a good one. Matches. What is that saying? It says um, "Covered California." Oh, so it's matching your hat, or it's matching. Yeah, I'm trying to do that because the black matchy, one. Matchy. The black one. The black one just wasn't quite as good as this it's one. It's very ominous. What? What is this? Yeah. Like fashion. Fashion people, statements. I, you know, who would have thought? And this people... is the best one. This is the best one. This was left. I kid you not. This was left last year on our trash bin and all over all of the alleys in Coronado. Talk about, mm. these were the patriotic, slightly sparkling masks that were all over the Who place. Who would have thought two years ago that we would look at, be looking at masks as, as fashion accessories? I still, mean, still my favorite. You know what kind I have? A blue one that's made of paper. That's my, that's my go-to and that's what I use. The force is strong with this one. <laughs> I'm not a big mask um, like advocate, like I think uh, many have. I mean, advocate in the way that I'm not a promoter. You wear it because it's necessary and that's it. End of story. It's like, you know, there's so many things in life. Like you drink your water, you don't brag about it. You just do it and that's it. Well, you wear shoes. Well, shoes, that's a sacred area. No, now that's okay. sacred, but not masks. <laughs> No, it, it's shoes are like shoes are like complex because don't, they're don't fashionable. Get all, yeah, they're well, don't functional. get all carry don't get all carry Bradshaw on me right now. They're functional. <laughs> they're they and they carry the weight of your body, so they're they're you know they're pretty important all around forever. 
Hey, welcome. They're pretty important. So, um, you welcome know, to the new fashion thing. statement. Oops, I got to turn it up. Turn yeah, it right up. I mean, people are, yeah. Anyway, um, so, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm not sure what's going on with, um, I, I would think that testing, COVID test tests, are a little more accessible than they were. Uh, a little more at the turn at the turn of the uh the turn the of the year, century <laughs> the turn of the year which was uh, you know in Je december january when we had this upsurge and it was really hard to figure out how to get the um I, i'll tell you lineups it was, too it was pretty damn easy to get them in february i can tell you that because well, february, they, yeah uh yeah. but not then so uh i think if you're going to get tested i think it's a pretty easy thing to do right now and there's and at home tests there are at home tests but they're not do. as fast they're not quick and sometimes you need a 24 hour like we we um require if somebody has you know, has symptoms or has been around people with symptoms, we require them to be tested before they come back here. And um, just because it's an environment where you have to, um, you have to be safe. I mean, you know, when you're dealing with critically ill uh, people that you have to be able to take extra, pro extra precautions. So that's a requirement. Going not to, just quarantining but also also um testing you don't like the quarantini you know you don't make that drink in your house no no i do not what's in the quarantini i don't remember <laughs> i know it has i know it has alcohol for viral sure vodka viral vodka it might these are viral vodka or uh genomic gin Gotcha. I'm not sure which I'm not sure which it is. But anyway, I'm not um, loving my lighting today and I should be less. You're not loving it. it. You're not, not loving, loving it. it. Nope. Yeah, go, I love it. Anyway, so you lighting love it. Lighting is one thing. It. Lighting is one thing. I mean, it was interesting too is that that uh even though there are antiviral drugs available. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it would seem the, as though most uh, governments in the Western world have actually pushed really into social distancing, masking, and these types of protocols, as well as the vaccines, but not the uh, rep the antiviral drugs. Yeah, why is that? I mean, rem it's rem too expensive. That's why. Remdesivir. Well, do you know on. how much remdesivir costs per dose? You're looking at you know, it's like it's like trying to get people to. Uh, pay out of pocket for things like Humira. I so mean, the, these are thousands of dollars. These are not, you know, cheap things. So it's, so it's the, economics. The vaccine's cheaper. It's dirty. It's oh, cheap and dirty. Far cheaper. Far cheaper. Cheap and dirty. Well, that that really makes me feel good. There you go. Cheap, <laughs> and, dirty. cheap and dirty. By well, the know. way, I was woken up this morning, and we've had this conversation several times. Speaking of cheap um, and dirty, I was woken up by the radio this morning, and there was a commercial, and it was the second side effect of this particular drug. And I don't, I don't like, I just block up the drug name, but the second side effect, it was no longer could lead to a fate, fatal thing. It says side effect will could lead to death. It's no longer flowery language, or it wasn't a know, fatal. It wasn't a fatal event. No, it was lead to death. Second, to death. second side effect, and then it continued. It continued. <laughs> I well, just like. I think, but let's let's make it clear that the vaccines. It, it, we're not talking about the vaccine. You're talking about a commercial. I'm talking about a medication. Drug. Well, okay. Vaccines yeah. are medication, but I'm talking about a, you know. A, I'm talking about a specific, not the vaccine. I'm talking about a specific advertised medication. And you know, uh, the U.S. is the only country that does do. Uh, drug advertising. It's legal to do that. Only country in the world. For prescriptions. I haven't seen advertising for marijuana on TV. No, I haven't even seen any CBD um, oil or anything like that. No. But they um, do a lot of that average kind of advertising in TV shows instead. <laughs> but um, it's a little less uh, dangerous, I'd say. Hey, speaking of danger, certain states in the southeast are more dangerous in terms of the spread of COVID-19, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta variant. Yeah, I Alabama. Delta, gamma, yeah. Alabama's the big one because you've got uh, actually KIV, very interesting, super ultra conservative. The, gover the governor, right? Yeah, she's the yeah. governor, and yeah. she's encouraging everybody to get vaccinated because they've got like a you know 66, 67 percent of the population in the so-called 
unvaccinated state. And, um, you know, there's there's only about 25 percent of well, 25 percent of them vaxxed. 74 percent. You've got you've got huge increases in the number of people who are a number of cases that are being presented. And I think nationally, what was it, in the last week or two? It was a 300 percent increase from what it was previously. Now, mind you, an increase is not absolute numbers. It's just you're starting to see the curve, another uh, spike going up. What I heard, like encourage was is a nice word. What I heard that was she what she was actually doing was blaming this upsurge, blaming on the un, uh, blaming on the, the unvaccinated. Yeah. Well, then it's 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 interesting um, because now you finally are seeing a bit of unity between it's say Dem parties, Democrat I mean. and Republican parties because, and I think to a certain extent, because they realize that their members are in danger and their power base may erode based upon infection and death, so. Well, you know, it should never have been a political issue, but of course it is. And, it, you know, everybody else in the world is saying, what? <laughs> what? Why, what, what what's wrong with you people in the United yeah, States? Yeah, yeah. Canadians are asking, have asked that for centuries. <laughs> Canadians are the most vaccinated country in the world at this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 what's interesting about it is that this is something that is, as you mentioned earlier, is continually evolving over time and we're learning new things. And as I said before last year, I said it's going to be two to three years before you really know what the hell's going on with it. Um, and the fact that you get these variants coming about every few months or so is, is quite intriguing and disturbing at the same time. You know, uh, something came up this morning. Um, I had um, someone come work here for um, to help with my husband, and she had the Pfizer vaccination. And ever ever since then, she's been getting these really strong allergic responses to food, almost any food she eats. And um, so, so her what happens is her face just puffs up, and that's been her reaction. And I said, you know, have you reported it to VERS? The um, what is it? I can't remember actually what it stands for, but it's adverse. It, it's adverse reactions to the vaccine, adverse uh, responses. And it's a government site. And I would encourage everyone to put those in because if, if nothing more, it'll make, it'll make these vaccines better and, and less, less problematic. I mean, I hope so with all this kind of data coming. So I really encourage people, if you've had it, some, any kind of adverse reaction is to report it. Um, so, so data can be collected and, and improvements can be made. Well, but let's, let's be clear too, that, you know, adverse reactions are not the norm. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that's scaring people away. Vaccine side effects is what's scary. Yeah, but the, what, what scares people is that you know, it, it's so suppressed, these adverse reactions, like, oh, just get the vaccine. Um, and it's so suppressed and it does happen. And I don't think, I think there's le much less reporting than their, their, the reality uh, would, would, uh, would indicate that there are a lot of adverse reactions. I mean, I, I myself have, you know, had like a little bit of dizziness and, um, and lightheadedness since then, which is, it's concerning. I mean, it's very concerning it can cause all sorts of um, situations where you lose your balance and all sorts of things can happen. So, um, so anyway, I just, I just um, I encourage people to use that site and um, you know, listen, there, you know, any, you could be reacting to anything at some point, but because of the, um, the nature and the amount of um, usage of this particular medication drug at this point i think it's important to get some accurate accurate information and I, I, I would I, I would however caution you to uh, not necessarily uh, associate cause and effect uh, because i know people who've had um, flu vaccines in the past who said oh my god i got the flu immediately and yeah, but I think this is a little bit less directly. I mean, like I got the flu vaccine. That's to be expected. We expect that to have flu symptoms, but this is different. I mean, everyone that I speak to has different symptoms, you know? Um, 
so anyway. I mean, I'm always curious about the N, about the number of people with whom you speak, and then the evidence that comes about. I mean, there's there are symptoms, but symptoms dissipate in general over the past, a series of days. Having already had a COVID infection myself back in December, I can tell you that any side effect from a vaccine was extremely minor relative to the actual COVID infection. So. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the reason people are getting the vaccination is they don't want to get uh, COVID and then and, turn and, long COVID. And the greatest tragedy uh, that I can tell you are the people who are in the hospital about to die and suddenly they've seen the light and they want to get the vaccine, but it's too late. So. Yeah, but but you know what? And, and I go back to the verse, the reporting here. And it's, uh, again, I, I think I shared this with you. When my husband was in the hospital, that's when I had my vaccine. Uh, lost in the hospital. I had my first vaccine then. And his dia dialysis nurse basically told me that he passed out in the parking lot after he got his vaccine. Now, that helped me because I felt very lightheaded. And I might have just gone into the, you know, I might have just gone into my car feeling like, okay, well, this is feels a little weird. But I could have, you know, it prevented me from it. It actually um, helped me to take better care of myself after that shot. So I sat there for a little bit longer and waited it out. Um, so I think just sharing of, uh, you know, rather than just being hyperbolic and, you know, like getting all frenzied about it, just sharing information uh, mm -hmm. in a sober way is I think beneficial. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, so, as we move forward, though, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of the, the social distancing uh, coming Again? back into vogue, of course. But it probably, it probably will be regionally. We see it state by state. The challenge is one comment that I had heard um, last week was it almost seemed like in the United Kingdom that the, uh, the they're, they're so hell bent on opening up, opening up, opening up that it almost as we like were the government has made a decision to push forward for herd immunity, uh, virus yeah. be damned, so. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what we did here. Um, you know, that's definitely what we, he, we did here. I know Canada is opening it up now to, um, tra you know, travel between our two countries. I think that's August 16th or something like that because- Oh, that's uh, right, that's right. It hasn't happened yet, but there's no. a lot of talk about it. Talk, talk, talk. So the, the real question is, do you let your guard down as things are opening up? And the challenge for uh, for a lot of a lot of folks is that people aren't as careful as they were before. And that's why we are seeing, I, I had this strong yeah, exactly. feeling. Before the 4th of July, I had this strong feeling that, uh oh, here's a super spreader holiday. Just wow. wait two or three weeks later. And here we yeah. are two to three yeah. weeks later, boom. Especially I mean, that was a no-brainer. We knew that, right? <laughs> well, no, amongst the people who were running around, I think they were no-brainers at that point. So. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So you do have a, there is a sense of social responsibility towards your fellow man, woman, mm -hmm. pet, child, and everyone else. I mean, the fact that hospitalizations are most prevalent right now between the ages of 20 and 40, that's a little disconcerting because the, the oldsters in general have gotten vaccinated. I mean, those who, who have chosen to do so. And, uh, but Delta is pretty vicious. And uh, I think it's kind of making the, the first go around uh, look like a piece of cake. I think this, well, this is the one. The vaccinated are still getting yeah. it. Well, and, you can still um, get it, but that's because you're, you know, you're you're looking at something. It depends on who you believe. It could be 88% protection. It could be 94%, 90%, whatever it is. In any situation, people who are vaccinated, it's not 100%. And that's just the way it is. There's also, there's also I think it might be from Israel, this this information as well, um, that, that they are vaccinated or also transmitters. Oh, um, they are transmitters. Oh, yeah. that's not of just Delta, Israel. Of Delta. Yeah, that's not just Israel. That's you also here in the U.S. now with a couple of researchers. And so so this mm -hmm. is a very interesting phenomenon, which is that. And the other thing is you can be an asymptomatic. You can be a person with yeah, no sniffling, course, no sneezing and still be spreading the viral word, so to speak. I mean, so. this is this is the reason I got the antibody test before I actually got um, the vaccine, because I wanted to see if, in fact, I had it. And, you know, had slight some slight um 
symptoms like a sore throat, which is, you know, actually people who are vaccinated and are getting the Delta are having more like cold like symptoms mm -hmm. versus those who get Delta uh, that are unvaccinated, they, they have more of the headache, more of the traditional um, symptom patterns. But um, yeah, so. So to repeat the slogan of that famous airline by the same name, Delta is ready when you are, or mm. if you're not ready for that matter. So, so it's not come fly with me. <laughs> it's not come fly with me. It was the, the old the thing was Delta. And it's, you saw the same thing in, in terms of marketing. Way. Corona beer took it hard when everybody kept talking about, you know, it's Corona time. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, God forbid. I mean, the funny thing is that, that uh, the nomenclature has gone to Greek uh, letters because nobody wanted to associate a particular country with a particular variant. But I would so, think that um, Corona time would be an upswing in their sales. <laughs> Well, actually, I, I'm willing to bet that they that they did have an upswing yeah, then because sure. people well, were drinking, stuck at drinking, home. Drinking actually did go up, and I don't know the percentage. Cheers. Uh, not drinking water, and this is not vodka. Mm -hmm. This is water. That's what they say. No. <laughs> you know, I don't even like. Uh, you know, I, I can't. Well, anyway, I don't. Wouldn't like to drink any any kind of hard alcohol straight up. Anyway, just the I soft just like alcohol. Like my glass of wine with my dinner, and that's it. Like soft alcohol, not hard alcohol. Soft alcohol. <laughs> yeah, no right. natural. Oh, natural. Oh, no, no, no. Wear pants for all your broadcasts. We've learned that in the in the days of Zoom. <laughs> no, oh, um, natural as in oh, natural food and. Um, oh, and okay. Pants. Which yeah, leads okay. us to, is it time for Q&A? It, 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 it might be. We've been at this for 27 minutes so far. <laughs> Well, we may not get through all of the Q&A today, unfortunately, but I mean, this is pretty relevant and hopefully you're interested yeah. in all this um, new information with the Delta variant. Yeah. But unfortunately, we want to discuss, but. Well, it's, 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 it's I, I wouldn't say unfortunately, only because it's it's a very important thing right now because it is uh, it's becoming prevalent. It's. Well, uh, it, it's unfortunate that we have are, are, are back at this again. It's unfortunate oh. that it's not gone. It's not gone. Not gone. Not gone. Hey, not so gone. Somebody, somebody who's not gone is uh, Dana from Indianapolis, Indiana, home of the Indy 500. I have a lot of trouble sleeping lately. I'm not under too much extraordinary stress right now. What mm -hmm. could it be? I mean, uh, I've been eating later in the evening because it's summer. Could that possibly be the cause? Could be, could be, Dana. Um, you know, how late? Are we talking about eight, nine, 10? Or are we talking about, usually I recommend people no matter if it's summer or winter, you know, try to get most of your uh, meals and meals done by at least six, six thirty, and um, and try not to snack in the evenings. It's yeah, the basic. midnight the midnight snack is not going to take you on that midnight train to Georgia. So yeah, and it doesn't matter if it's a healthy snack unless you're having some sort of blood sugar uh, sweeps, uh, ups and downs, or you didn't really have an appetite. You know, I was going to say you didn't really have an appetite for dinner. I would say, it, why did you not have an appetite? I'm just saying hypothetically, maybe you didn't have an appetite or maybe you ate too much at lunch or, or something like that. And um, so you're eating later. So it's really important to have some regularity in your schedule of your meals throughout the day. And then you don't have to think about it. You just eat and you eat these certain things three times a day and, and then you're done. You shouldn't have to really focus a lot on your meals unless, uh, well, actually you should be focusing on ingredients and how to prepare it and all of that stuff. But um, so anyway, I just think that, that uh, it could be the reason that you're, you, you did gain some weight. Is that right? Or or trouble sleeping. Dana yeah, didn't say it's just about the sleeping thing. And it could be sometimes I've actually found if I'm eating too much spicy Mexican food, even before the hours of six or six thirty, I might have a little bit of indigestion because of the nightshades yeah. involved. Yeah. And so I, I, I have aw been awakened at uh, one or two in the morning thinking, whoa, I need some more water or something because my tummy is not happy. Yeah. Not that the cooking from Mama May's kitchen isn't good because it's excellent. So, I had I had mole this week, uh, chicken mole. Mole, we had it too. Yeah. There was mole, chicken mole. mole. 
chicken yeah, moray in the house. That was a little too spicy. It wasn't too spicy the first day, but the second day it was just a little too spicy, which also disrupted my digestive system. So there you go. So um, Dana, don't eat chicken mole mole in, at night before you go to bed. Or also watch your portions. Maybe it's your portions. And are you having alcohol? That could also disrupt your sleep too. Are you having sweets? That could also disrupt your cycle, your, you know, your blood sugar cycle as well. So, um, you know, so yeah, not necessarily stressed. Um, there are supplements you could take if you're uh, feeling concerned about that. I mean, there's magnesium could help you sleep and um, there's a, a product that I really like a lot. It's called Stress Arrest from Designs for Health. I really like that to help you sleep. And then there's melatonin and there's, you know, tryptophan and, and uh, 5-HTP. So all of those can- And just can even help. some digestive enzymes, particularly maybe your last meal of the day. I don't know how old you are, Dana, but we do tend to have a decrease in the production of our digestive enzymes over time. So that's always a good thing to consider too. Yeah. Yeah, all sorts of things. It, well, we don't know if it's your digestion, what you're eating, how you're eating, uh, but it sounds like when you're eating might be a uh, concern. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you have more questions about that or any additional information for us, just drop it down below the video here because we're in eight different locations today and we will be alerted to your message. So thanks for or, that question. Or if any of you know, want to share some ideas with Dana, please, I mean, this is a community environment, so please, you know, this is all about helping each other. So please, uh, if you have any further insights that we, Christopher and I didn't cover, please uh, add them to the um, the forum-like situation here. The forum-like situation. <laughs> <laughs> this is the LA forum. Because... LA forum, yes. Um, oh. yeah. yeah. Are you not on Instagram today? Am I on Instagram? No, I'm not on Instagram today. Okay. I thought of doing it, but I was running a little late, uh, mm -hmm. trying to do too many things in a single day. Hey, so uh, hopefully that is, that's uh, to your needs. And if you want to get in contact directly with Monica, you can reach her at Monica at coachingforhealth.com. And you also have a page here on the Book of Faces. So. Yes. Um, okay. So, oh, so I'm curious, though. We have Maria from Gainesville. Is that Gainesville, Virginia? Florida, I think. Ah. I've been to Gainesville, Virginia, and that has exploded over the last uh, decade or two. Anyway, so Maria, Maria. Oh, this is great. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Maria. I love seafood. Lately, I've been, oh, I'm not with you on this one. Lately, I've been getting rashes and wondering if I'm developing an allergy to this favorite food of mine. Any ideas? First of all, I'm wondering if it's shellfish, Maria. Mm. That would be the first thing that comes to mind. But Monica is more skilled in uh, food sensitivities than I am. Yeah. So shellfish, a lot of people would ha have more issues with than, than fish or uh, scallops, you know. Um, mm, scallops. Scallops are yummy. So, you know, sometimes it's the food and sometimes it's the frequency or the amount of that particular food. If you're if you tend to have the same thing over and over again, you may develop some food sensitivity. So the best way to figure out uh, what's causing some of these rashes is to pull it out uh, of your diet completely for a couple of weeks and then, you know, add one thing at a time. Test it. Like, for example, if it's if, maybe you want to just test fish any kind of fish. Uh, so test it for that week. And if the rash comes back, you'll have a clue. Um, if not, try net, then start bringing some of the other uh, perhaps shellfish that you, you enjoy. Um, and so it's really important to identify. So you try the fish for a week, nothing happens. You pull it out, just pull it out again and try a, a cell, shellfish and see what happens. So um, sometimes it's a combination of the foods too. So and again, it could be how it's cooked too, because I know if I have, for example, fish and it's like got tons of garlic in it, that's going to bother me. Or maybe there's a sensitivity. If you're having everything dipped in butter, maybe you have a dairy sensitivity or there are possibilities yeah. here. So, you know, that's a good, that's a good point. So if you have chicken and you have garlic and there's no reaction, then, you know, it's not the garlic or if it's lemon uh, on your, um, you know, I don't know what else, 
lemon would go on on your pasta or some of your grain dishes, then you'll know it's not lemon. So, um, so yeah, that's a good point. So you have to be a little bit of a scientist and you know start tracking these foods because it sounds like you don't want to give it up, and nor should you if in fact you can identify what type you know what type of seafood uh, or what exactly which one that you gravitate like if you are you know eating crab all the time uh pull that out put out pull out the crab for a couple of weeks and then start it and see what happens don't be so crabby yeah and then you will be less crabby because you won't you'll have be, the rash you'll be less crabby so take monica's advice and become your own sherlock holmes yeah and if you need help we're here for you help me uh, <laughs> Oh, here's one. It's interesting. So Eddie from Lubbock, Lubbock, Texas, the Lone Star State, yes. says, I do very physical work as a nursing assistant. I bet you do, especially based on the average weight of patients in the United States. Um, I've had some recent injuries to my back and hips. Are there any supplements you would recommend or things that I can include in my diet to help reduce inflammation and maybe prevent some of these injuries from happening in the first place? I don't want to live on Advil and nor should you, Eddie. I think good that question. Good question. It is a good question. Well, you know, you look at supplementation and I, I can tell you that I used to have my old injury protocol. I think you, Monica and I both got this from uh, our friend Mark Percival and the coaching, uh, yeah, what was it again? It was health coaching. coaching. Health coach health international. Coaching. International. international. It's the international that I was thinking of. We, That's we. what got me con confu confusé. <laughs> uh, and so, so, but but one of the injury protocols that I always gave to my patients was simply to um, give them bioflavonoids, a proper amount of vitamin C and things like that, because you really want the vitamin C is going to, the bioflavonoids will give you the lattice work upon which your cells are going to be produced when it comes to collagen and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. um, magnesium is a great one. I really love uh, chelated or chelated, potato, potato. Magnesium, whether it's a magnesium glycinate or uh, you know even a, even a citrate actually is not too bad. Um, malleate, those types of things. Um, malleate, malleate, yeah. Ma malleate. Uh, if you were going to say reducing inflammation, one of the favorite things, actually, it was. it's funny you mentioned this, Eddie, because one of the favorite things on my, my wife's food blog was uh, a tea that she'd been talking about that was given to her by her tia, by her uh, her aunt, who's very well educated, lives down in southern Mexico around Tabasco. And she recommended a tea which consisted of ginger, turmeric, both fresh, fresh ginger, fresh turmeric, and uh, a cinnamon stick. And she gives you all the directions on how to put it together. And that anti-inflammatory tea has been extraordinary in reducing her knee pain from all of her gym activities. And I find it to be really great too. And it actually tastes good. So, Yeah, I mean, there must be some sort of connection with, with Mexico and India. Uh, because that sounds like Ayurvedic medicine too. It, 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 it is very Ayurvedic. Yeah. In fact, yeah. it's from it's from a, a, a the original recipe is from an Ayurvedic practitioner who has a practice in southern Mexico. There you go. I wonder if it's someone I know. Because <laughs> uh, you know anybody in Vera, Vera, do you know anybody in Veracruz or Tabasco? <laughs> well, no. I think she was in Puerto Vallarta. She has a oh. home there, but she I, I knew her because she was from uh, Canada originally. Well, Indian. But uh, but she, she she's actually a homeopathic uh, um, physician. Um, but that that was what I was going to mention. She you know studied medicine and she had a, a specialty in homeopathy. And um, you know she homeopathy is big. Well, I don't know if it's as big in India, but it's also big in in Mexico. Um, so there's certain pockets of the world where homeopathy is really big. So in India and Germany and France. And so, so it was interesting to see the correlation between India and Mexico with regards to homeopathy. So, yeah. So anyway, this is a great ginger anti-inflammatory, turmeric anti-inflammatory, you know, the magnesium. You want to also build up some of that, that, that matrix of the, the muscle tissue, like glucosamine, uh, chondroitin, um, MSM, these are all good things to help you so you don't, you, you can strengthen um, your tissue and, and you maybe prevent some of these, these um, 
injuries from happening. And also, and, and also EPA, DHA, which you'll find in yeah. fish oil. Fish oils are very yeah. good as an anti-inflammatory and literally help to keep your cell membranes in good shape so that the uh, nutrients can get in and garbage gets pushed out. But also, I mean, it, it's, it's funny, but there actually is a correlation between a certain amount of healthy fats or healthy oils in your diet and lubricated joints. Yeah, lubrication. That's really, really what's good. And, it, and also the calcium good. magnesium that, that uh, Christopher mentioned is, but there are specialty formulas like for ligaments, specifically for tendons, for, um, I mean, you're asking anti-inflammatory specifically. So, uh, but you want to work on that too. You want to, um, anything that can help with collagen. And by the way, chicken, I had an injury and I was just craving chicken. <laughs> and it were you, was- Were you eating the ends of the bones? <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I mean, chicken soup would be great. Like like tradition, like make home homemade chicken soup where you're actually cooking the bones because there's so much um, collagen, um, you know, in the, in the bones. And so that would help you a lot. So chicken soup, definitely chicken soup is not only good for the soul, but it's good for the, the building. Well, it's good. It's good for <laughs> the soles. It, it is good for the soles of your feet. It is good for the soles of your feet, the soles of every inch of you. So, so yeah, there's a lot, there's food. So I, I feel, I feel it, uh, feel your pain and um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a not an easy job. You know, there's a lot of physical work that people don't really know unless they're either doing it or they're seeing it, you know, seeing someone um, in that career, in that field. Yeah, there's a lot of lifting. I can tell you, you know, having yeah. 33 years as a chiropractor, there is a lot of heavy lifting involved, especially amongst those who happen to be heavy and don't do a lot of lifting on their own. You know, uh, I had someone come in uh, uh, the other day um, and he does a lot, works with a lot of hospice patients. And he said most, he sees a lot of people in their home. I mean, that's where he works uh, in a home health um, uh, agency, but he there's a lot of people using Hoyer lifts now, which um, you know that can protect certainly protect the person who's caring for the per for the individual who's unwell, and that would just ease a lot of um, stresses on the body. You don't have to transfer. You don't have to lift. And the other the other thing too is you know if you can have an assistant. I don't know if you're so I don't you don't really specify here, Eddie. If you are in a hospital facility, oh, it says nursing, nursing. and a nursing he assistant. Is a, he is a nursing oh. assistant. Yeah, nursing assistant. Well, I was just wondering if you could have another assistant with you when you're working with particularly challenging patients. To have, it's better to better to team lift in many situations than to try to do it completely on your own. But it varies. And it might not just be lifting. It might not just be lifting. It could just be, it could be moving them, changing them, whatever. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, in hospitals, you know, oftentimes they'll do it alone or they'll have the, the, um, the attending nurse help them depending yeah. on what their, their activity is. But in the home environment, they're usually on their own. And mm -hmm. even in uh, skilled nursing facilities, they're usually on their own, unless of course it's a, it's a challenging patient or a patient that weighs a lot. Um, so I'm wondering if we should continue with Mariah from St. Louis or save her till next week. I have another broadcast at the top of the hour today. Mariah, and can you wait? Mariah, can you wait? Or, well, why don't we just, we can touch on her. Let's, yeah. let's see what we can do. So Mariah. Her, so we'll, uh, they call the wind Mariah, but you're Mariah. I didn't say Mariah. Mar Mariah Carey. Is this Mariah Carey? Mariah Klein. Mariah Klein. So. I, we're inclined to answer your question. Anyway, so Mariah from St. Louis asks, I love my evening glass of wine with dinner. I used to be able to have just a glass and I'm assuming not want any dessert. Now I want both and I've gained 15 pounds in the last six months. I know that I need to give it up, but what can I do to replace this evening ritual with? With? With, okay. What can I do? To, what's the substitute for my evening ritual of a glass of wine and a dessert? Well, um, yeah, I mean, you know, sort of like when you're drinking, when you're drinking, your resolve and your, you know, boundaries uh, fall apart. And so, um, so you may want to eat more. And if you're having, like, you're clearly wanting a lot of sweets. So, um, 
get up and walk, go and walk uh, after your dinner or before your dinner, because anything you can do sort of a healthy habit be before this, this um, before your dinner would sort of anchor in your brain, like I'm doing something good for myself and why would I do anything else? So on some level, your brain is kind of thinking that when you do good things for yourself throughout the day. Um, so drink water, drink sparkling water, um, drink, you know, something in a wine glass. You can drink a non-alcoholic beverage in a wine glass if that's, you know, if you, if it's, if it's not going to want you to, to break out the bottle and don't break open the bottle or corkscrew or whatever. Um, and don't have a lot of it around. I mean, that's like, you know, the best thing when you're sort of in an addictive pattern is just not to have it around. I, I could make a suggestion, which is to never buy screw top wine. Make sure there's a cork in it because it's an extra effort. Yeah, that's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's too, too easy. Too easy just to unscrew. <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds like that, you know, it's just sort of, uh, you know, increasing your sugar need and your sugar, you, you want more sugar. And so that's going to definitely increase some of your insulin resistance and um, perhaps as it has done with you, increase weight, unfortunately. Yeah, and of course you're saying in the six months, and we have been in the pandemic times too, and as Monica mentioned earlier, alcohol consumption across the entire great nation of ours has actually increased during that time. But that's time. no excuse. It, it sounds like you don't want that to continue. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that stopped drinking during this pandemic. You know, a lot of people that, you know, just, went the other way. So don't make it an excuse to, um, to medicate, to self-medicate, try something that's a little more, um, life affirming rather than, than life numbing. Um, so yeah, we're in a difficult time. We're de definitely living a very difficult time right now, but, um, there are things that you can enhance, do to enhance your life rather than deplete your life and deplete your life energy really. Even the, and there's things that you could have instead of if it's called, if, if it's something that helps you relax a little bit at the end of the day or reduces anxiety. There are supplements you can take. There's other things. I mean, activities you can do for sure, like getting out and walking around and being in nature. Naturally. Yeah. So I hope that helps you, Mariah. And please, if you have any additional pieces to this question, or let us know how you do with some of the suggestions we're, we're making here. Or I, did you make any suggestions yet? I, 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 I'm uh, admonished not to be suggestive on air. Okay, do you have any suggestions? <laughs> I would say. Well, it depends on what you're, what you're actually consuming, Mariah. I mean, if it's, uh, you know, the ba so-called balanced diet of a piece of chocolate cake in each hand, that's not the that's not the way to go. Um, if it's maybe a small piece of dark chocolate or something, and that is your dessert, well, it's small and it's fairly, uh, uh, it's a nice little reward at the end of the day, and you don't necessarily have to have the wine with it. And I think it's it's decoupling those those two would be the first step, I would think, which is you know just to see if you can skip the dessert. Um, and as Monica said, just eat a full meal so that you don't necessarily have that continued desire for something super sweet. And yeah, yeah. In insulin resistance is always a challenge. Yeah. And I would recommend, you know, having a, a good organic um, wine instead of the dessert anyway. But if you can't do both, if one is leading to another with, you know, with association... Yeah, the other thing is change up the dessert a little bit. Maybe it's a bowl of um, berries that have very low glycemic index, and that could kind of wean you off of the uh, the wine with dessert just because you're going to be satisfying. You're going to have something with a satisfying mouthfeel and taste and get you out of the high sugar type of dessert realm. Yeah, so. yeah. Just don't have it around for sure, and fruit is always a great thing. You know, some fruit and cheese is always nice. I mean, it's done um, very much in European countries and specifically France. You know, that's the dessert. Fruit and wee cheese. Wee wee. Wee wee. And, and, and I think I'm going to have to wee wee before my next broadcast. So well, we're thanks for sharing, Christopher. <laughs> TMI. TMI. <laughs> okay. So. We're, we're, we are, are, are 50. It feels like therapy. Our 50 minute hour is up now. <laughs> Are we scheduled for next week? 
we, we have not yet. We are would, scheduled. Would you, like, would you like to get on the schedule for next week for episode same number Same time, 30? same place for uh, Total Health Live Therapy. <laughs> Total Health Live Therapy. And COVID news. And COVID news, should you choose. Yes. So okay. thanks for being here. I'm, I'm glad we could uh, answer some of the questions and, um, you know, expand upon the whole COVID um, situation right now. Yeah. And so just remember, don't let your guard down. Mask up, buttercup, and we'll see you next week.